Good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to St Luke's Church Crosby online worship wherever you are. My name is Gillian and I'm one of the licensed readers at St Luke's. During our online and in church services this morning Caroline's talk will be focusing on the person and faith of Joshua. So we look forward to learning more about him and his faith in God a little later in the service. Now Let's take a few moments of quiet to settle ourselves in God's presence for our worship this morning. We say together the words in black. We are all welcome as we share this time together. God is with us and his spirit draws us closer. We're now going to light a candle. This is an opportunity to light a candle wherever we are. A candle will be lit in church and we can join in with that in our own homes. This reminds us of Jesus' coming into our world and into our lives, that he is the light of the world and that he is with us and with all his church in different places around their candles. An invitation from Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathise with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Let us pray. The Collect for the Third Sunday Before Advent Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy, restrain us from excess and revive in us new hope that all creation will one day be healed. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, let's lift our voices in praise by singing our first song, Over all the earth you reign on high. This will then be followed by the Bible readings and the talk from Caroline. So, let's sing God's praises. readings this morning are read from the New Revised Standard Version and the first reading is taken from Joshua chapter 1 verses 1 to 11. 
After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all his people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea in the west shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For the, then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, pass through the camp and command the people, prepare your provisions, for in three days you are to cross over the Jordan, to go in to take possession of the land that the Lord your God gives you to possess. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the second reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 29 to 31. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. Well, thank you, Paul, for the readings. So let's start in Hebrews. And we're at continuing our series on heroes of faith. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. Do you notice anything there? Our hero of faith today is Joshua. Moses, faithful assistant, and then at the Battle of Jericho, the leader of the Hebrews. And the writer of Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews, had forgotten who it was. Doesn't even get a mention in this list. 
oh, yes, he remembers the story and he remembers the fun bit about Rahab the prostitute um, getting away with things. But not Joshua. Joshua somehow disappears. Now, funnily enough, that's not a unique story in the Bible. Um, yes, of course, we now know the heroes and the names of people because finally they got written down. But if you look at some of the books uh, of the Old Testament, Jeremiah, the great prophet, the last thing we know about him was that he told the Israelite people of Judah not to go to Egypt. And blow me down, they took him to Egypt. And that's the last we hear of him. Nehemiah, the great rebuilder of the walls of Jerusalem, went away for a year and all his reforms had been forgotten. Ezra, the priest who was living at the same time, gets quite a good mention in Nehemiah's book. But Nehemiah isn't even mentioned in Ezra's book. Daniel fades into insignificance. Uh, you know, late, we don't know how it finished. We don't know what happened to Esther. Jonah finishes the book in an almighty sulk. All through the story of God's love for his people are folks who just disappeared, who were invisible, who were not known. They were heroes but they just weren't known. Do we feel like that? Do we feel, oh, we're not heroes, we're just congregation members, we're just anything that goes along, we're just in the pews or seats. The story of the Bible is that we are never just congregation. We are all potential heroes. Let's have a look at Joshua and his relationship with God just for a few moments and see what happens. So I'm just going to read again that starting uh, few verses, 10 verses of Joshua. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you as I promised Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea in the west shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it 
and day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous. And then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and be courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Three times, three times, God says to Joshua, be brave, be strong, be courageous. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land. Be strong and courageous. Do you think that possibly God had worked out that Joseph, I'm not Joseph, I keep doing that. Haven't I said already, we forget about Joshua. Let's get his name right. There is Joshua being told to be strong and courageous. Now, to be fair, when he had been one of the spies spying out the land of Canaan, it was Joshua and Caleb who said, hey, let's go up and attack. He had been brave then. Why did he need to be told three times to be strong and courageous? I wonder if it was because on this occasion, God knew that Joshua was going to be on his own somewhat. Not with his friend Caleb, not with his mentor and advisor Moses, but on his own leading. Maybe he knew something of the difficulties of leading the Hebrews. After all, he'd been close to Moses all that time. Maybe he didn't think that he had Moses' skills, his speech-making, his authority. We don't know. We don't know. We're not told. All we're told is that God said to him three times, be strong and courageous. And as I look at the church in the start of the 21st century, as I look at our church family here in Crosby, I just wonder, do we need to be told? Do we need to hear? Be strong and courageous. Do we need to be disabused of our notion that the professionals will do it? The guys at the front of church will do everything. The vicar, the curates, those few people who seem to be willing to take responsibility. But all through the Bible, especially the Old Testament, we meet with characters who come and then disappear. They weren't the heroes, they weren't the leaders, they weren't the powerful people. They weren't hugely impressive. And perhaps, like Joshua, they got forgotten. I doubt if any of us will be remembered long in the church history. I doubt if we'll even get a book of uh, new Christian uh, you know, autobiographies. I don't think we'll get chapters. But that doesn't stop us being a hero. 
what stops us being a hero is being strong and courageous. And what happened as jo Joshua took those words seriously? He did something. He called the Israelites to arms and they marched across the River Jordan and they headed to the walled city of Jericho. Strong, courageous, and taking action. Is that the only thing that is stopping us doing things for God? Do we need to hear Caroline be strong and courageous? and do whatever it is. Why don't you say to yourselves quietly your name and say, Hillary, be strong and courageous and go and do. Joyce, be strong and courageous, go and do. Eric, be strong and courageous and go and do. Put your name in that sentence. What do you think that God is calling you to do? What is he calling me to do? I'm personally discovering my calling as we go. I think it's all about being treasurer, actually. One friend a few years ago called me a real Barnabas, an encourager. And I sense for a few years, that's what is my calling, to be an encourager in the background. What's yours? What's your calling? And just in case, just in case, you're wondering and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I'm excused this because I'm old. Can I tell you a story that I was told many, many years ago about Moses? Moses spent 40 years at the, uh, in the Egyptian court, learning to be a somebody. He spent 40 years in the Midian deserts, learned to be a nobody. And he spent 40 years with God learning how God can use a somebody who's learned to be a nobody. That means God started using Moses at 80 years old. We don't get to retire as children of God. Perhaps we'll be excused working hard till we're 120. But age isn't the issue. I think the story of Joshua tells us, only be strong and courageous, for God is with us. I will be with you, said God to Joshua. I will be with you, said Jesus to the disciples at the end of Matthew's Gospel, the Great Commission. Only go and do and act. Heavenly Father, 
come into our hearts and make them strong and bold. Come into our eyes and our imagination that we might see a calling to serve you, to reach people who are untouched by the love of God in our age. Send us out being bold and strong and courageous. Amen. Thank you, Caroline, for sharing our reflections on Joshua and giving us some points to ponder this week. We now come to our confession. The Apostle Paul reminds us in his letter to the Romans, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight and invites and offers us the freedom to come into his presence with confidence and confess those things that we may have said or done that have let him and others down. So let us take a few moments of silence to bring those things to him now. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Eternal God, our Judge and Redeemer, we confess that we have tried to hide from you, for we have done wrong. We have lived for ourselves and apart from you. We have turned from our neighbours and refused to bear the burden of others. We have ignored the pain of the world and passed by the hungry, the poor and the oppressed. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins and free us from the selfishness that we may choose your will and obey your commandments. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. We are now going to declare our faith by saying together the following creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us pray. The prayers this morning are led by Paul and myself. Over the next week, the COP26 UN Climate Change Conference meets for a second week of negotiations. 
and our prayers today focus on some different aspects of the conference, the world and our role as stewards of the earth. There will be a short pause after each section for your own prayers. Then we will say the words, Father, Lord of creation, and please respond with the words, In your mercy, hear us. Father, Lord of creation, in your mercy, hear us. We pray that you would use this conference to bring healing to our world. We continue to pray for the heads of state, government, environment ministers, the World Bank and COP26 President Alak Sharma and all other delegates attending the conference and negotiations this week. We pray for reconciliation between countries and humility between nations and those impacted differently by climate change. Loving God, we pray for those leaders of countries already experiencing the impact of climate changes, that their voices would be heard and carry equal weight and power in the discussions. Father, Lord of creation, in, in your mercy, mercy hear us. us. We pray for the negotiators of each country, that there will be good translation and communication throughout the discussions. We pray for transformation and breakthrough to be achieved, that will create a positive impact for the future. That they will be bold in their ambition and agree definite plans to reach the targets set out in the Paris Agreement. The worst hit by the climate changes are those who have done least to contribute to it. Loving God, we pray for radical justice and fairness in the decisions made, and that these decisions won't be empty words, but everyone will work with conviction to achieve the target set. We pray that the momentum is not lost after the talks are finished. Father, Lord of creation, in your mercy, mercy hear, hear us. We pray for the city of Glasgow, its city leaders and residents, as they continue to host many people from all over the world. We pray for the generous and compassionate organising of hospitality and security and dealing with concerns of COVID-19. Father, Lord of creation, in, in your mercy, mercy hear us. We pray for children and young people around the world. We pray for those whose lives are most affected by the climate crisis. Loving God, we thank you for your young people and their passion and enthusiasm to care and protect the world. Give them courage to speak up and challenge those in power and for their influence to make a difference at this crucial time. And we pray for ourselves as adults that we would take them seriously. Father, Lord of creation, in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear us. We thank you for your beautiful creation that you have entrusted us to care for. We are sorry that we have not cared for your world in the way that you intended us to. We ask you to stir our hearts into action. Inspire us with ways we can make a difference in our homes, our church here at St Luke's, in our local communities where we live, shop and spend our leisure time. We pray for your prompting where we can do more to love our neighbour and build a world where nations, races, cultures and religions live with mutual respect. A world where the weak are protected and none go hungry or poor. A world where peace 
is built with justice and justice is guided by love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hebrews 12 verse 14 calls us to make every effort to live in peace with everyone. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And now let's raise our voices again in praise of God by singing our next song, When the Music Fades. When the music fades, all is stripped away. And I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's of worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it, but it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. King of endless worth, no one could express how much you deserve. No one we can pour, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it, when it's all about you. All about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. All about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. But it's all about you. All about you, Jesus. As our online act of worship comes to an end, we have a final prayer of blessing. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us his peace. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon us and all whom we love, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, we will. 
So thank you everyone who has taken part in the service this morning and thank you for joining us online wherever you are. I hope you have a good rest of the day and week ahead. Bye for now.